Hello and welcome to my painting video. In this video I'll be painting the Primarch and Avatar of Papa Nurgle, Mortarion. The Death Guard are my favorite Chaos Space Marine Legion and I was thrilled when a model of Mortarion was released. He is massive and incredibly detailed. During this pandemic it is the perfect model to paint. Because he is so big it was a bit daunting to start this model but I'm glad I did. I went for a different look than the standard color scheme as I wanted to experiment with dirty white armor and more vibrant wings. Let me show you how I painted him. The model was base coated with Wraithbone, a great basis for white armor. First I give it a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Next I give the armor a heavy dry brush of Usapti Bone. To give the armor more definition, I will give it a highlight of Flayed One Flesh. The basis of the white armor is done, but it is of course way too clean for the Death Guard. I will use three steps to do some weathering. The first step is Stivus Corrosion. Second, I give it a dry brush of Ryza Rust in various places. Lastly, I use Skeleton Horde to dirty up the armor a bit more. This is an easy way to paint some dirty white armor for your Death Guard models. I think the Skeleton Horde gives a great finishing touch for dirty and oozy armor. You cannot have a Death Guard model with some sort of green armor. For the base coat I use Death Guard Green. To shade the armor I use some Agrax Earthshade. To create some different textures I start with a dry brush of Elysian Green. The second dry brush is Nurgling Green. Now I'm going to dirty up the armor with some Reikland Fleshade. For the highlight I use Nurgling Green. After all the chaos of dry brushing it's good to end with a well defined highlight. To weather the armor I use a little bit of Ryza Rust. This is the same way I have painted all my Plague Marine armor. For a final touch you could add some Plague Bear Flesh or Nurgle's Rot to make the armor look more, well, icky. The purple cloak gets a base coat of the contrast paint Shyish Purple. I think the color is a bit flat so I'll give it a wash of Druki Violet. To even out the big areas of the cloak, I'll layer this with Zerus Purple. The highlight is a mix of Zerus Purple and Slanesh Grey. The next step is to paint the red loincloth. For the base coat I use Mephiston Red. I wash the cloth with some known oil. To make the red a bit brighter, I'll give it a wash of Kerberg Crimson. Next, I'll layer the cloth with some Evil Sun Scarlet. And finally, I'll give it a highlight of Wild Rider Red. The purple works really well with the green armor. The red cloth breaks up the model a bit. Alternatively this will look great in black. Mortarion has a lot of metal and bronze on his armor. I will paint all the weapons and tools metal and the armor decoration in bronze. First I base coat in lead belcher. 
The bronze parts of the armor are base coated with Balthasar gold. The blades of his war scythe are base coated with Stormhold silver to make them look brighter and sharper. I wash all the metal parts with known oil. And I wash all the bronze parts with Agrax Earth Shade. I highlight all the metal parts with Stormhost Silver. And all the bronze is highlighted with Psychorax Bronze. This is a nice way to paint the metal in bronze. Alternatively, you can highlight the bronze with Stormhost Silver to give it a more weathered look. Also, you can wash the metal parts with Agrax Earthshade to dirty them up a bit more. I am going for a bright green Vapor and Flames. That's why I start with Hex Wraith Flame. Next, I dry brush the Vapors and Flames with White Scar. To bring even more white into the mix, I will also highlight everything with White Scar. I had some trouble with the Vapors and Flame. The Flames look fine, but the Vapors could have been a bit more subdued. Luckily, that is something I can fix later. I wanted to make the wings look more vibrant and have a bluish tint. That's why I start with a base coat of Ethermatic Blue. To create a gradient, I use Dragonhof Nightshade to make the edges darker. I use a couple of layers and try to smudge the wash as much as possible. The arms holding the wings are base coated in shyish purple. Next, I will give it a highlight of Slanesh Grey. The hairs on the arms and the black tubes are painted with Black Templar contrast paint. In retrospect, because I painted the wings separate, I feel like the blue doesn't really fit with the rest of the model. This is the disadvantage of painting in sub-assemblies. Time to paint that handsome mug. I start with a base coat of Recarth Flesh. Next, I give it a wash of Druki Violet. A second wash of Karaburk Crimson gives the skin a nice sickly look. Now to bring back the original color of Rakarth Flesh. A highlight of Palette Witch Flesh gives the face a bit more definition. All the bone parts are painted with Skeleton Horde. I did not fix these parts with Wraithbone first. Instead, I'm having the spilled paint on there act as some additional texture. The eyes and boils, which can be found everywhere on this model, are painted with Yandan Yellow. And given a highlight of Usapti Bone. Later on, I also added some Nurgle's Rot to the skin and a little bit of Volupus Pink around the eye sockets to make them look more disturbing. This is a perfect opportunity to try out my new bottle of Plague Bearer Flesh. Plague Bearer Flesh looks great straight out of the pot. But I will give it an extra wash of Reikland Flesh Shade just to make it look more filthy. Tentacles are given a base coat of Volupus Pink. I really love the look of Plague Bearer Flesh. I can highly recommend this paint if you want to paint Nurgle. The combination of Plague Bearer Flesh and Volupus Pink makes for a rich and deep looking pink. And we are nearing the end here. First, I'm painting all the tubes with Black Templar Contrast Paint. 
The wooden handle of the scythe is painted in wildwood. The green muck on the armor and rebreather is base coated with plague bearer flesh. Then given a wash of Bial Tan green. Lastly, I add Nurgle's rot to pretty much the entire model. Finally, I'll work on the base. I start with a texture paint, Sterlint Mud. The rock formation will be painted with Storm Vermin Fur. I needed two coats to give a good coverage. Next, I'll wash the rocks with Gnome Oil. I use a thick coat here. For edge highlighting, I use Administratum Gray. Next, I'm repainting all the grimy bits and recesses with Wraithbone. These recesses and grimy bits are then covered in Plague Bear flesh. And also a wash of Reichland flesh shade. As a finishing touch, I cover everything with Nurgle's Rut. Finally, the rim gets the color of Steel Legion Drab. Behold the glory of Nurgle. This is one of the most elaborate and detailed models I've ever painted. It was very fun, but also very challenging. Because I was painting in sub-assemblies, it was difficult for me to picture the complete model color-wise. Otherwise, I'm happy. I'm still a little bit conflicted about the color of the vapors and the wings, but it still looks very cool. I do love the juxtaposition of a tormented and terrible model like Mortarion, who is accompanied by these little joyous nurglings. They seem to be having a good time. Thanks for watching the entire video. It's a long one, but I hope you got inspired to spread the joy of Nurgle. From your own homes, of course. Stay home. Thanks for watching.